I've been a photographer for a few years now, and along the way, I've done a number of things that have really helped improve my photography. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of those tips and I hope that it will help you improve your photography too. Now, I'm actually out on location at the moment, so I will be shooting some landscape photographs, so hopefully I'll be able to share a few of those with you as well. But remember, if you've got any of your own tips to help people improve their photography, why not leave them in the comments below? Okay, the first tip, and probably the most important one, and it should be fairly obvious, is you've got to get out there with your camera. You've got to practice, practice, practice. I can't stress that enough. My photography dramatically improved once I really started putting in the hours, once I started getting out there on a regular basis and going out and shooting. That doesn't mean waiting for the most epic of conditions. It means going out in sometimes the worst of conditions, but just going out there and practicing with a camera, practicing your camera technique, practicing composition, all that good stuff will really help improve your photography. You've just got to keep on going out there and practicing. But that's not always that easy to find that self-motivation. So I've got another couple of tips for you that might help with that. If you need a bit of extra motivation to help you get out there and shoot, plus you want to accelerate your photography skills, one of the best things you can do is go on a photography workshop. They're an absolutely fantastic thing to do. I've done a number of photography workshops and I've always come away learning loads, not only from the tutors themselves, but also from your fellow students, your fellow photographers there, because they all shoot different things in different ways with different cameras and you can learn a load. So not only do you get to go to great locations and get guided around and get some extra tuition to really help accelerate your photography, but they're also great social events as well. I've made a number of friends from uh, being in photography workshops. So they're a great way to be motivated about your photography and then you can take that motivation with you and go back home and shoot your own local area with your newfound skills. Following on from workshops, the single best thing that I actually did was actually go on some one-to-one -one tuition. So I actually met the person that eventually became my one-to-one -one tutor on one of the workshops I went. It's a great way of going out and finding out about a person and whether they'd be a good fit for your one-to-one -one requirements. Because finding someone to do a one-to-one -one is not just about do they take nice pictures? Do they take the pictures that you want to take? Are they known for being an educator? It's really important to consider that because just because they're a good photographer and they take pictures that you like, doesn't actually mean that they can be a good photography one-to-one -one tutor or workshop leader. So really important to do your research because one-to-ones can be expensive, but for me, it was a, one of the single best things I ever did spend money on for my photography. I remember the first one-to-one -one I went on, I just blew my mind with what I was missing in my photography. It really helped me develop massively in my photography journey. So if you can, uh, find a good tutor, getting some one-to-one -one tuition is a really good idea. Now, I've got a list of companies and people that run one-to-ones, um, and I, if you want to find out what they are, there's a blog post that goes with this video, include a link to that in the video description below, and in that blog post, I'll list out some people that I know who run photography workshops and run one-to-one -one sessions. So I appreciate that photography one-to-ones and workshops, they all cost money. And while I think they're a great investment to improve your photography, they're not always accessible to everyone. And depending on when you're watching this and the current climate, it just generally might not be a good thing to do anyway. So what can you do instead? Well, why not shoot a photography project somewhere, something you can shoot in your local area. I mean, I did a photography project last year. I shot the same location on Dartmoor for a year and it was really interesting because it really opened my eyes about uh, composition and creating a body of work or how not to create a body of work depending on which way you look at it. But it was a really interesting and more importantly motivating thing to do. So why don't you select something as a photography project but make sure that you think the project can be achievable. So if you're gonna do something like a 365 project 
only embark on a 365 project if you think you can actually finish it because there's nothing worse than embarking on a project and then not actually finishing it. Just pick something that's achievable for you. And what you'll find is that that motivation to complete that project will get you out more and more with your camera and you'll learn, hopefully, a whole stack about you and your photography. Hello again. So yes, you may notice a slight change of scenery. One minute I'm out walking in the hills of Wales and the next minute I'm back here. What's happened? Well, uh, the weather took a really nasty <laughs> turn for the worst. It really started chucking it down and I had to stop filming. And then I had to really just kind of depart the, the hill that I was on. I had no chance of getting any more photographs. So, but this is not the end of the video. I've only got about halfway through sharing my tips with you. I am going to share a couple with you now in the comfort and warmth of my little home here. But I am hoping to film the rest of this video um, back out on location. So I'm away from home for a few days, so I've got ample opportunity to share with you a couple of more tips. But let me tell you about some of them um, I've got to tell you now. So the first one is all about books. Get into photography books. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've run a series uh, called On My Bookshelf, where I take a look at a lot of different photography books from lots of different types of photographers, covering actually lots of different genres. For me, it really helps inspire and motivate my photography. I'm a big, big fan of photography books. Even looking, even looking and buying at uh, photography books that aren't necessarily uh, the exact genre or even the exact style of landscape photography that I like to take. I can find inspiration and creativity from all sorts of things. Now, one of the uh, other good books I, I do like to go is a, is, a, is a guidebook. Now, the reason I bring this one up here, which is called The Photograph in the Snowdonia Mountains by Nick Livesey, is that, that walk you saw me doing earlier uh, before I got rained off is actually a walk in this book and that's when I was following it's a, <laughs> like a really look had like a, look, look, look like it had a lot of potential uh, but unfortunately uh, rain called off but so getting books like this are really good now, actually if you want to see me uh, talk about more about this book I actually met up with Nick Livesey shortly after this book was published so I'll include a link for that as well so uh, so there's a tip get yourself some a good guidebook that's good handy for inspiration but also get other uh, photography books, uh, landscape photography books, and, and have a real look through them and get inspired by the pictures that you see. Okay, for my next tip, again, one that you can kind of consume from the comfort of your chair, and that's about consuming other photography media. So this is mostly around uh, watching other people's YouTube channels. So hopefully you're already a subscriber to my channel. Uh, if you're not, please do go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, it's always worth checking out other photographers' YouTube channels. It's a great way, again, of expanding your horizons in terms of uh, creativity and the different types of photographs that people take. And I think, again, similar to the photography books, by consuming other people's pictures and studying them and understanding how they uh, go about taking pictures, that's a good thing about YouTube. It's not just about you look at the, the final product, you understand the process behind it. So that's a really good way of learning more about photography. And by doing that, you can take that knowledge and, and take it out with you into the field and put it to, to good use. But while you're actually traveling to a location, because most of the time we'll, we do that in the car, I think one of the most uh, underlooked ways to do things is to consume podcasts. Podcasts are still a thing. And, and there are some really good photography podcasts out there, some ones that really talk about the creative and artistic side of photography. And I really like listening to these, uh, particularly when I'm on my way to a shoot, because it helps get my brain in the right frame of mind. And I've learned an awful lot from these podcasts and actually from the YouTube channels, which I've been able to put into real use for my own photography. Now, if you want to know what some of my podcast recommendations are, I'll also include those uh, for links uh, in the blog post that goes along with this video, which uh, a link for is included in the video description below. Right, that's enough of the tips from here. I'm gonna head back out onto location. I'm not sure where that'll be. I'm actually gonna be covering a couple of locations while I'm away on this little photography trip. So it could be back here in Wales, or it could be somewhere a little bit different. But wherever it is, I'll see you in a few minutes.
Hello and welcome back. And as you can tell if you look behind me, I am no longer in Wales. That's right, I've moved up to the Lake District and I'm now ready to continue sharing my tips to help make you a better photographer. A great way to drive through those improvements in your photography is to try and get yourself published in a magazine. And it's not as actually as difficult as you think it actually is, or certainly it's not as difficult as it once used to be. Almost all the magazines have open submissions where you can submit your pictures. I personally submit my images to Outdoor Photography Magazine. They run a feature, uh, they have a monthly competition. I quite often enter that and I've quite often been published. And actually seeing your images in a magazine is a real confidence booster. For me, it was a good sign that my photography was going the right way. So why don't you check out your favorite uh, photography magazine and see what their submission process is. Another fantastic way to actually improve your camera skills is to shoot a completely different genre of photography. So my love and passion is all about landscape photography, but when the evenings are dark or it's the winter months, I actually go out and shoot a lot of live concerts. I've really found that shooting uh, music images in difficult environments really helped improve my photography. For one thing, it made me really get to know my camera, its limitations, how it worked, where all the buttons were. And the reason this makes my photography better is that when I'm actually out in the field doing landscape photography, I'm not thinking about the controls on my camera. Everything's instinctive, I can do it without looking. Plus, shooting a complete genre of photography is also a lot of fun as well. And you can take a lot of the lessons you learn in composition and light, especially with things like music photography, where the light is definitely challenging. You can take those forward and you take those skills onto things like your landscape photography. A fantastic and fun way to help improve your photography is to actually print your work. I've always been a massive fan of printing my work. I think it has really helped me develop as a photographer. Because when I print one of my photographs off, I'm making a, not only making an investment, but I'm also getting something physical. And for me, that's a really important part of the photographic process. In fact, the photographic process isn't complete for me until I've made a print. But by making a print, I actually spend more time looking at my images. I actually spot more things right and more things wrong with those images when I've actually got it in my hand. So it's a really fantastic and enjoyable way to help improve your photography. Now I've done a whole stack of videos on printing your images at home. I'll include a link for those in the video description below. And for my final tip, I'm actually joined here by my good friend and fellow photographer, Chris Sale. Chris, have you got a tip for the viewers? I have, Julian. Excellent. My top tip for improving your photography is to review your images. Now, this takes a little bit of uh, discipline, but uh, what you should do with your images, when you get your images, is you should sit down and you should write down three things that you like about your images. Mm. And you should then write down one thing that you don't like about that image. And if you do that over time, you will start to find common themes. And then you know exactly what you need to work on to eliminate the bad bits from your photography. That's a great idea. It's not bad, is it? That's to I'm glad I invited you to come and see you all then. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Chris. It's my pleasure, Julian. Right, that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed my little adventure around Wales and here in the Lake District and some of those pictures have maybe inspired your photography. And more importantly than that, I hope some of those tips are useful and you can put them into action and you too can improve your photography. But that's it for me. If you did like this video, do all the usual stuff, like, comment, share, all that great stuff. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. But until the next video, I'll see you then.